Hello, hello. Hi, welcome to the House of PMO. Here we are again with a, another session. It's uh, They seem to be coming along thick and fast at the moment. There's quite a lot of things that we're, uh, we're doing, obviously, uh, which is all good. It's all good stuff for uh, people in PMO. And um, and just like buses, what do we say? You wait for yeah. some PMO certifications to come along. And they all come we along. were waiting years and years, and then suddenly he, you know, he is yet another one. Um, but um, this is the... Uh, House of PMO Essentials. So hopefully um, you you here to join us today to listen to us talking about the new one, which is the Essentials for PMO Managers. Um, we um, feel free to use the chat uh, throughout the session. We'll be looking at that for any questions that you might have throughout, and um, you know we're happy to to take those as we go through um, or towards the end. Um, so if there's anything that you're listening to that we might not give you enough um, detail on or you might have missed something, uh, just drop it into chat. And, um, you know, by all means, um, just say hello right now. Just let know, people know um, where you're from. Um, it'd be interesting to know whether you're a PMO manager, um, as you'll find out today that the, uh, the essentials for PMO managers is not just for people who are PMO That's managers. Most. That's right, indeed. Yeah. Well, do you want to, as you've kind of been chunting on for a few minutes now, do you want to actually <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself, Lindsay? <laughs> Tell people who you are. Yes. Because uh, we might have new people on the course who've not met <laughs> us before. Okay, so, um, yeah, hi, I'm Lindsay. I am one of the co-founders of House of PMO. Been around um, PMO stuff for uh, a couple of decades. Um, give me a quick shudder. Um, so, worked as a PMO manager before, worked in PMO recruitment for a number of years, and um, been working with Eileen, obviously, around uh, the House of PMO stuff. Before that, it was called PMO Flash Mob, some of you might have heard of. Um, but essentially, what we've been doing over the last uh, two decades is bringing PMO people together in various different forms to help them to, um, you know, learn more about the profession that they've chosen. Okay. Uh, and my name's Eileen Roden. Um, Lindsay and I met uh, over 20 years ago now at a, at a PMO event. Um, which I think is kind of we, we've all been into either doing events and very, very quickly ended up running the events. Um, so and for a long time, we did that as kind of as separate to our day job. Uh, so I ran a number of uh, PMOs um, and then went into project management and PMO consultancy and training. Um, and then as we've kind of continued to work even closer together, we've kind of culminated now into actually kind of setting that up into a professional body, which is where Lindsay and I kind of work much more closely together now um, as we're doing it as our day job. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've been, we've both been kind of working in and around this area. And one of the things that we were very keen to do was to make sure um, that we have provided kind of sufficient material from the House of PMO into a range of different roles that exist in and around the PMO. And I think, um, as you'll see by the quote on the screen, this whole kind of concept of PMOs, it has been gradually growing um, over the last kind of 15, 20 years that we've been uh, working in and around there. And I think we do have to recognise that um, where project and programme management goes, PMOs naturally follow. And Project and programme management now is ubiquitous. There isn't, I would suggest, there is not uh, an organisation in the land that doesn't recognise the fact that there is this concept of business as usual, of kind of keeping the business taken over, but also of the need to do projects and development and in, 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 uh, introduce change. And because the, you know, the level of knowledge around project management and its use and its requirement in businesses has grown, then naturally the kind of the PMO has kind of been coming up um, behind that. So a couple of things that we've noticed in the work we've been doing over the last few years is that, you know, people are starting to recognize the value of having PMOs in their organization. That's becoming much more um, evident. Uh, we still always have the challenge in terms of what value do you add and what are you there for, which is, which, is, which is fine and we can deal with that. But I think what we're also starting to see now, much more, um, what's becoming much more commonplace is seeing those senior management roles, um, senior PMO management roles in the organization and how they're starting to be recognized as somebody who is part of the senior management team, not just reports into the management team. And I think a lot of our language is still reporting into the management team, but actually the PMO manager and the PMO director 
is much more common and we wanted to make sure from the House of PMO that uh, we had a certification that covered all of the four different levels, which is where the kind of the manager um, material starts. Yeah, I think I've been most uh, keen with the, um, the House of PMO going down this route of qualifications. We knew we had to because you know, a professional body um, should really have standards and qualifications and things like that. It's, you know, it's given. But um, I think for me, um, it was just thinking back over the, uh, the 20 years that actually for uh, the more senior level, so the manager, the director level, um, th there's a real lack of that, that learning and development opportunity that's specifically around something to do with PMO. There's lots of things you can do, obviously, you know, around well, project absolutely. programs. I mean, we've talked about that, haven't we? You, you, you can do, go and do your management of portfolio training to teach you about kind of portfolio management, yeah. Yeah. which is fine, but it doesn't necessarily teach you what you're doing in your yeah. PMO role as an individual. And that's where hopefully the House of PMO certification um, comes in. But I suppose there might be a few people on uh, who perhaps don't know a little bit about the House of PMO uh, and the competency framework we're going to be talking about. So uh, we're going to start off with a little bit talk about that before we get on to kind of the content of the certification. So House of PMO, Lindsay? Yes, yes. Why and what? <laughs> um, okay, so we're actually coming up to our uh, first birthday tomorrow. Um, so we did start in May last year, um, but it has been around in different uh, forms before that. Uh, before that, it was PMO flash mob. Uh, and then way back, um, we've, we've been um, working on something as a voluntary group, weren't we? We didn't necessarily have, um, you know, a... Um, anything as, as structured as, as House of PMO, but um, essentially it's been an accumulation of all those things we've done over the years. And I thought, actually, now's the time to make something a little bit more formal. Like I said, it's the that opportunity to look at the standards and qualifications. And um, you can't do that with a name called PMO Flash Mob. <laughs> Nobody takes you seriously. But to be fair, that wasn't its point. Its point was, and then still is, is that you're bringing people together in PMOs. And, you know, a lot of you have been um, writing in the chat today um, announcing who you are and what you're doing. I hope that you're, you're, you're making a note of people's names and um, please do, you know, connect to each other afterwards on LinkedIn. Um, you know, it's always great to have allies and friends and stuff that are working in PMOs in different places. But the whole idea was is to, to bring it all together, which is why we came up with the concept of a house. So it's a home um, where people can come together, think about development for themselves, um, help develop others, which is what we're doing all the time. Um, yeah. And also let's, um, you know, to collectively, can we help to move the uh, profession uh, uh, PMO forward as well, which is we're still having fun though. We still have fun. We still have <laughs> the ridiculous flash mob name and the ethos behind all of that in some of the events that we do. Um, and you can, you know, if you've not come across before, please do go and check us out and, um, you know, have a consider becoming a, uh, a fully paid up member of the tribe and you'll be more than welcome. You'll get the house keys and all that kind of good stuff. So out of that, um, one of the other way, uh, reasons why we did decide to be a little bit more grown up is that we've been working on a flash mob project for three years, which was to create a competency framework. Again, that's um, a book we finally managed to get launched uh, about um, February, February last year. year. February last year, um, and I think that's be fast becoming a staple on people's um, libraries and a bit, you know, a bit of a go-to in terms of reference book um, because it's the first time that people are able to have something that is actually about their development, their, you know. Um, the jobs that they're doing within PMO rather than the PMO itself. So this is the, uh, the competency framework that you can see on there, um, looks at the different competencies that are required to work in, um, you know, the different roles that we've, we've come up with, um, the different context of PMOs. People, the reason why it took three years that people have said to us that it's not possible. It's not possible because PMOs are all different and um, therefore how could on earth could you come up with a competency framework? It is possible, and we'll talk to you a little bit more about mm. that because it does actually uh, figure in the qualifications as well. Um, but the role profile, uh, the competency framework set us on that path, really, because um, it, it's probably quite obvious that once you start to look at something like competencies, it's the next question is, OK, so if I've got a, a lack of competency in some areas, what do I do about that? And this is why we're, we're here today talking about um, the third level of qualifications. But there it is. There's the um, just the, the, the overview of what is classed to be the, um, uh, the domains within the, the competence. And again, what you'll hear today is we'll be looking at three of those um, in more detail. And you can see that just 
expanded out a little bit more. Um, so we touch on the P3M delivery support, PMO management, and the P3M enabling, and those do figure uh, in the PMO manager qualification. Um, but Eileen, what's the, um, there's not just those competencies, really, is there? No, and, and when we were, we worked together with a whole kind of international group when we were pulling together the competency framework. And a lot of the conversation was around, yes, but we also do some line management. Uh, and when we're introducing a service or introducing a tool into the organization, then obviously we're going to be using, um, we're going to be using project management and program management. And if we're going to be supporting senior management, we're going to have portfolio management. Surely you want all of those competencies in the pay more competency framework. We said, well, there's actually kind of no point in us rewriting all of those competencies because they already exist. You know, we've written our competency framework completely agnostic. So it kind of sits with any other kind of method, process, whatever kind of flavor you go with. And so what we've said is that actually we'll recognize, and when we did the role profiles, we recognize that actually you will need a level of competence in project management or in program management or leadership and management or even business analysis, depending on your role. Yeah. And so rather than, as I say, try to make the, the pay more competency framework kind of just unbelievably huge, we would focus on those particular competencies that were different in a peer more context, yeah. which is where we came up with those four domains. Yeah. But we reference these other six competence frameworks and say, if you're going to be a peer more analyst, if you're going to be a peer more manager, then you do need a level of confidence. And we'll kind of come on to that in terms of uh, what that level might be. I mean, straight away, it does show you though, just the just what go, it goes into a good PMO practitioner, that it's not just project management or, you know, it's those plus those competencies from, um, you know, specifically within PMO as well. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you kind of think, well, actually, does that make us a jack of all trades? And I would say, actually, it makes us a master of all trades, unfortunately. <laughs> um, you know, we, we do need to be um, a, a cognizant of all of the de various different frameworks we're going to use for delivery in our organisation. So when it comes to looking at a um, competency framework, one of the, uh, the, you know, if you compare it to, say, a project manager's um, competency framework, it's a project manager to project manager, and you can do a competency framework for somebody who has a project manager title. Um, when it comes to PMO, we know that there's, there's slightly different roles in terms you know, that exist within that. Um, and um, you, you'll see uh, on the screen there that we carved out four of them. These are the ones that are the most common that you will see. They may have different titles, but actually if you go and have a look at the role profiles of each one of those, I think you'll recognize that actually, yes, a PMO administrator can be called a project officer. Uh, a PMO analyst could be a project coordinator and so on. So, but these are the four, um, the ones that are probably most recognized out there in the marketplace, try and get some kind of standard application. And they're essentially levels, aren't they? As opposed to kind of specifically, this is exactly your job title. So yeah. we're just, it's about recognizing the level that you're working at and what's most appropriate for your role. Yeah. So as you can see that when we were thinking about, okay, so if people wanting to increase their competency, in uh, the particular role that they may be in or where they're looking to move on to in the future, um, it would make sense to us that we can't just have one qualification that covers all of it. Um, we could do, and we could probably call that two year undergraduate uh, degree <laughs> program. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> However, um, we know that um, that isn't possible. So we came up with the idea of um, essentials, and that's the the key word here it is and, it, and it's been really interesting because uh, when a lot of people do courses it's to kind of demonstrate they're kind of at that level and I think actually a lot of people um when they're kind of moving into job want to have some kind of confidence that they kind of know enough to do the job they're not going to be the best they possibly be because obviously that comes with it with a number of uh, years of experience so these essential suite of products basically are kind of entry level certifications that are for people going into each of these roles uh, and I think the interesting bit isn't it is the, the concept of an entry level certificate for a PMO manager and an entry level certificate for a PMO director is actually probably quite novel to people because they kind of see that almost as a kind of a, a culmination of kind of well I've had lots of experience of admin and administrator and we absolutely recognize that but that a lot of people are actually kind of their, their knowledge is limited to their own experience you know and, and having managed a number of PMOs and moved between organizations what you recognize is that other PMOs do you know they do things differently 
other organizations work differently. Uh, and my very first move for, from a, a working in a PayMo to a PayMo manager's job, I'd taken copious notes. Uh, I might have forgotten to delete quite everything off my laptop. And I moved in thinking, right, I'm going to set up a PayMo exactly as I had in my previous organization. And you get into the new organization and all of a sudden you realize, well, actually, they're going to need different things. And so what we wanted with these essential certifications is we wanted to give you an insight into the potential breadth of the role. So you might recognize some of the things that you do in your role. So, you know, if a payment manager goes on the payment manager essentials course, you might recognize some of the things that you do on in your day job, but actually you'll recognize other things that actually you don't do in your current payment manager's role. But if you went for another job or went for a payment manager in another payment within your organization, you might actually be asked to do so. So really this kind of, they are entry level qualifications, but they do co cover the breadth of the role that is covered by this job title pay more manager. So we've listed the four certifications on there and it's worth saying the administrator and the analysts, they've already been live for a number of months. There's been quite a few people have gone through those certifications where we're, we're talking about the payment manager launch uh, today and then the director launch is going to be in the next few weeks. So this is kind of specifically about the manager when we're talking today. Yeah, but actually the, the, the fact that the next one's coming along in a matter of weeks as well is as uh, That'll be it. That'll is be it, all is four. it? Yes. All four of them will be out. But, um... A testament to the bags under my eyes. <laughs> so the... Um... In terms of the certification, now, you know, we, we wrote the book and we were happy that we um, it was kind of peer reviewed because of the number of people who were working on it. And we wanted to be absolutely uh, in order to give the certification some credibility, not necessarily from our perspective, from the delegates who are taking them to have some confidence that the uh, accreditation was actually worth having. And uh, we did. Um, Align and partner with APMG International, who are a well-known um, IPR and examination board um, who have a global presence, which means that from the house pay most perspective, we can get many training providers across the globe uh, who do their exams through APMG. So uh, they have brought, I have to say, a welcome amount of rigor around the exam questions and the exam papers and do provide the opportunity for training providers to pick this up across the globe and for individuals to do their exams across the globe. They are only in English at the moment, but they are available globally. Or they will be at the end of the end of the month. So let's just kind of go into a little bit more detail in terms of kind of the, the types of things that kind of have set the, the scene for the essentials for PMO managers certification. And, and one of the things that we have uh, set is some prerequisites. Now I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll do the why first. Um, one of the beauties of going on a, on a course, on a public course, is that you get to meet other people who are um, in a similar position to yourself. And we know there are particularly ambitious people who want to kind of move into a PMO manager's role. Um, what we can't afford to do, or we can't ask the PMO uh, credit training providers to do, is to kind of go back to basics and introduce some of the kind of the standard terminology that's been used. And therefore, by the time you attend a manager's course, there's a level of expectation that we have in terms of knowledge and, uh, and potentially experience that you would come to um, on the course. Just means we've got the right people to have the right level kind of conversations at that manager level. So um, we've got some choices in terms of kind of prerequisites. So if you've been a, a PMO analyst and you've got your essentials for PMO analyst course, then potentially you've got enough knowledge to come and do this um, course. Uh, we're looking for a practitioner certificate um, in any project or program management certification. Um, so whether that's kind of P3O, whether it's kind of Prince2 or Praxis, we want that kind of practitioner certification. And really um, equivalent to three years working experience within a PMO environment. Now, obviously, uh, that can only be assessed by the training provider by the production of your CV. So we just need to kind of make sure that the right people are arriving on the project management uh, essentials course. So the idea of the um, essentials course is that um, it is for people who are either have just moved into their payment manager's role or they've moved into their payment manager's role and kind of, you know, feel as though they, they want to expand the breadth of knowledge around their particular role. But we also want it 
to be for people who are about to apply for a payment manager's role so they can come along and say, look, I've done the certification. I understand what's the role involved. I've demonstrated that I, I you know, can, can do the things that are going to be required of me. So it's very much kind of a practically based course in terms of this is what you're going to have to be doing um, when you get into that role. Um, so and what we've done is we've kind of defined the role profile and it's very much around this whole kind of PMO manager is about setting up, running, transforming and close the PMO. And I've written and all that involves, which is essentially the services that sit below that, but also naturally will include the management and the relationship between you and your team. And um, it will also include how you introduce those services and your management and relationship with the other people um, in the kind of the senior team that you're uh, supporting in your organisation. I think one of the other things that we're also conscious of and uh, are very aware of is that you do get a lot of people who have been working in delivery roles like project managers, programme managers um, that are taking on the role of um, or moving into some kind of PMO uh, role. Um, it's also you know very good for, for those people but absolutely yes that have that kind yeah. of uh, background which is you know is a, a very common um, occurrence and yeah. um, i think uh, you know a lot of them don't bother to um to do that kind of you know knowledge um get up to date with well, knowledge yes, about uh, where pmos are right now because yeah. they kind of have it from you know well they've done project management and they've done mm -hmm. program management and they've might have had a relationship with the pmo and had some services but they don't see behind they don't see under the covers of the pmo yeah. so you know and again what we didn't want to do is say you haven't got to have a lifetime in pmo we don't want everybody to drag every much as we would love everybody to do the full suite you don't have to go back and do the administrator and the analyst certification and um, if you've got some experience and you know your way around projects and programs then we come on to that yeah. i do i think want to just mention a couple of other things in terms of um people who are coming on this course. Um, firstly, in terms of we recognize that at the, at the payment manager level, you may also have delivery responsibilities. So, uh, you know, um, can it might be the delivery lead in the organization. I've got the project and program managers and I've got this kind of PMO and I might have a PMO lead working for me. So that might be also uh, relevant. And I think what we're also seeing on a, a, um, going through the certifications are people who work in professional services where they're delivering um, services for clients and therefore if you work in a professional services and you're delivering on behalf of the clients the conversations that we have and the materials cover that kind of PMO manager as well yeah you know, so ultimately what people are getting out of it when they've finished the course is um, is this what you're seeing on screen now? yeah no. so so the idea is is that there is a there is an exam uh, and by passing that exam, you will have demonstrated that you have got the essential knowledge and understanding to actually undertake the role of PMO manager. We are not saying that you are going to be the best PMO manager in the world, but what we'll certainly do is say, actually, you've got the you've got all of the things you need to start on that role. And actually, what you'll come out with from the uh, the training is an understanding in terms of how your journey. Um, which I think is the next slide is how your journey kind of goes from there in terms of kind of what additional skills and knowledge will help you kind of be a, a superb and excellent mm -hmm. PMO manager. Mm -hmm. So it's about that kind of giving you the confidence to say, well, actually, I understand the breadth of the role. I understand how to approach that role. And I know the things that I'm going to have to be able to do and where else to get the skills and what else I need to develop along the way. Yeah. Just to um, just to take a, a question, um, we know that there's already um, exists in the in the marketplace P3O. Yes, and you know, a, a many. People, I might have a bit to do with that. You may have a bit to do with that. Eileen was the uh, author of the 2013 version, which is what is the you know the one that is still there uh, today, which seems uh, ridiculous. That's nearly ten years old. I know, isn't it? And you just consider how much PMOs have changed um, in that time. But um, but, but it, you know, it is there. It is a very popular. And um, I still teach it and still love it. Yes, but um, so how you know you're a PMO manager? Um, you know what, what's the what's the difference? Okay, so, so predominantly the P3O certification is about ensuring that we've got the right PMO for our organisation. So it, it goes through the process of identifying the right products and services and making sure we implement them effectively. So it's very much kind of uh, the focus is on the PMO and it does cover off some of the roles within that. 
Whereas the House of PMO certification is very much based at the individuals. So it's saying you as an individual, this is your role. This is the skills and competencies you need to have. These are the things that you're going to have to do in order to be able to do that. So it, 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 it's a different focus than the P3 or course. Right. Okay. So, so it, 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 we thought it might be worth just kind of going through and um, if we said it's all about kind of doing the PMO role, and I think this is the interesting bit, because I know we've got a, a few people um, who are on the call today who don't necessarily have the job of PMO manager. Um, and the classic one is PMO lead, which is essentially kind of management by another name sometimes in terms of um, that role. So what we wanted to do was just to kind of make sure that people, sorry, just, uh, people have a key understanding about what's included in that role of the PMO, uh, the PMO manager in terms of how we uh, deduce that from the competency framework. So essentially the, the PMO manager is uh, somebody who's uh, there to run, transform and close PMOs across the organization. Um, and as we've said, and in some organizations may be combined with delivery responsibilities via the project and program managers. What does that actually kind of uh, mean in practice? I think the, the first bit there is about actually from a PMO manager, accountability sits with me around all of the services that we deliver from that PMO and to make sure that through the team that they're they're achieved in a, an effective uh, and efficient way for the organization. Uh, and again, for some small, that could be a project office, uh, uh, some project services. It could be right up to enterprise PMO level. It could be, as we've talked about, from a client project, or it could be from a major strategic program, or it could be for a digital transformation. But essentially, as the PMO manager, we're there to make sure that we have all of the services that are required for our customers to deliver. We need to make sure that, uh, and you know, this is where we kind of taught the leadership management, we do need to have uh, team development. We do need to make sure that we understand who we've got on our team, how we're um, utilizing them and their skills and capability and how we're developing them to support uh, what's required by the organization um, going forward. I think the interesting thing for these, the uh, slides that you're seeing um, are from the role profile for the PMO manager. So it gives you some insights into what you can expect on the course, because that is exactly where um, the syllabus is uh, uh, driven from. from. Yeah. Um, here's some more. No, what do we say to you about doing a presentation with lots of words? However, <laughs> you know, these are, uh, again, a fun the profile. So um, if you've not um, got your competency framework, um, you'll be able to have a look at these uh, slides later um, to understand, the, you know, to read a little bit more about the, the role yeah. for the PMO manager. So next four bullet points in terms of what you're expected from a PMO manager's perspective um, is about developing the right culture in your organization. So just um, uh, interesting, we did the leadership um, presentation last week where we were talking about kind of leading the organization into better and project and program management absolutely sits with this. Um, making sure we um, drive the, uh, the right resources around um, P3M delivery. Um, typically going to be the custodian of the standards and methods that we use and um, it may not be custodian across the whole organization if we're a project or program office and um, but we do recognize that there'll be people who are managers of the center of excellence so it will be the kind of the, the standard method uh, and also um interestingly at the manager level is where we're starting to take some ownership um of the tools so that's um also covered and then the final, uh, the final three bullet points in terms of that role, um, and it was really interesting of all of the PMOs we've ever spoke to, we've yet to find a PMO that doesn't do reporting, which I'm sure kind of doesn't come as any surprise. And um, so unsurprising, it sits there in the manager um, role profile as well as every other role profile um, about reporting frameworks. Um, and, and everything that's involved from kind of decide, designing and what that is to kind of doing the consolidation and reporting. And we do touch about on storytelling, which is always good. Um, we then look at uh, establishing governance, so uh, which also links with um, assurance bit, so proactive kind of health checks and reviews. So quite a broad role um, from kind of individual teams to um, 
working with senior managers, doing a bit of reporting to actually doing perhaps kind of forecasting of resource requirements for the next three to six months and everything in between. So that really, as, as Lindsay said, the whole training is set up to give you an understanding of what's involved in each of those activities in practice. And as we say, you know, that the, the trainers of, of these courses are going to be experienced PMO managers who will be able to kind of talk through um, and facilitate some of the other delegates who will be there and you'll be able to get the feed into that as well. But I just, uh, the last kind of uh, 15 minutes or so, we just want to go and do a little bit more detail about the content uh, and what that looks like. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, exam. So a couple of the core texts that we've got. Now, it's always always interesting kind of trying to find something that was examinable. Um, so what we have provided to the training providers as they kind of that gets rolled out by APMG in the next couple of weeks um, is all of the materials they need to be able to deliver the course without buying the books because we recognize that it, it adds to the value of the, of the, or the cost of the course. Um, and so the course content will have all of that information in there. But if you wanted to buy the textbook or your training provider provides the textbook, this is kind of the core material that we have. Uh, it, the competency framework, obviously for the role profiles uh, and some of the detail of what's involved in the role. Um, this PMO service catalog, um, which is a text that was published by Stuart Dixon that's been around as well for the last uh, 12 to 15 months, uh, which kind of lists all of the potential services. Now, we don't expect you to know all of them, but we do pick out a couple of relevant um, services that you as a PMO manager uh, will be specifically involved in. Um, and then the final bit, because even though we're not method dependent and we believe the certification covers all of the methods, we did need a reference text for some project management type um, theory. And so um, Praxis Framework, which is there under www.praxisframework.org um, is a free to use a delivery framework that covers off projects, programs and portfolios. So we do use that as a reference, but that doesn't mean you, the, the um, certification is not relevant if you use kind of PRINCE2, PMP or um, APM in your organization. So that's where it comes from. And the learning objectives is that by the end of the course, the delegates will understand uh, the p and the PMO context. So we're really going to be talking about um, what, whether it's a project program portfolio, center of excellence office, whether, um, you know, kind of whether you're going to be working um, across multiple ones of those. And we'll also talk about the payroll context. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later. Um, we have obviously kind of talk about the four rules um, that um, at a high level, and we'll focus in detail on the PMO manager rule. So that rule profile I've, I've gone through, you'll know in a little bit more detail by the time you've done the course. And then more specifically, we go and delve into each of the competences that are required to undertake your PMO manager role. And that will be looking at the knowledge, skills and experience um, that will get you to the required level of competency. Behaviours. Behaviours. Did I miss behaviours? No, you had experience. Oh, did I? Oh, unfortunately. Knowledge, knowledge skills. Unfortunately, not even the House of PMO can give you the experience. No, You've got to go true. out there and get that yourself. But we can tell you about the behaviours. Yes, actually, the behaviours, um, um, as I've always said, are, are really kind of important. The, the difference between a, an OK and a good PMO manager. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> good job you're here, Lindsay. So in terms of... Um, what we've said um, around the various different kind of competency frameworks, we give a, um, a level that's required by the PMO managers, just to give you a view. And you'll see that um, intermediate and advanced, depending on whether you're working a project program or portfolio level. And we do expect some change management, some business analysis and some uh, leadership and management competence as well. Now, in terms of kind of um, what we do on the course, when we go through some of the exercises and some of the conversations, we will bring these in and we'll kind of explore them. What we're not going to do is be teaching you project management, program management and portfolio management on the course. That's that's not our bag. What we will be doing 
is going through the um, the specific competencies that we've got in our competency framework. So context roles, uh, delivery support, pay more management and enabling. Now, I'm just going to um, talk a little bit about the context here, because one of the interesting kind of conversations that um, came up and, and it comes up specifically when we go on to the kind of the, the payment management competence is that there are some organizations where um, implementing a new project PMO actually is pretty straightforward. We've um, we've set up 27 PMO project PMOs in the last year. We used to set them up every time we set up a big project. We've got a standard template. So that you know is relatively straightforward. That's completely different, Aileen, to setting up a new portfolio management office at the same time as we're introducing portfolio management into a large international organization. So how can we have a simple um, peer more management competence that actually kind of covers all of those things? And so we've used the Kinefin framework. Uh, which looks at kind of different levels of complexity to say, well, actually, there's different ways of approaching that management setup. So that, you know, is a, is a big part. So we don't rec we don't expect it all to be the same, but it's a really interesting kind of conversation about actually you may do the same activities, but how you approach them and the order you do them in will be different depending on the level of complexity of your environment. And there is no... You know, it's a bit like kind of um, what they call it, transformational, lead, not transformational, leadership, contextual leadership, where um, they say, actually, it's not just about, you know, being in the most, I've got the most complex environment. It's about actually the ability to choose the right approach for the right environment. So, you know, even if you've got all of the skills and capability, but you choose the wrong approach for a complex environment, you're still not necessarily going to be successful. And I think that's a really exciting bit yes. about this certification that I've not seen applied anywhere else um, in any other um, in any other really conversation. So that's that that's really interesting for me in terms of the context of the rules. But if we look at the, then the, the competency framework and the bits that we focus on now, quite rightly so, uh, we think you're a bit past P3M administration <laughs> by the time you become a manager role. But I say that, uh, and I always tell the story, when I got my first payable manager role, I was also in charge of the stationary cupboard for the organised, not just the project, but I was in charge of the stationary cupboard and I was also in charge of conference room booking. So, you know, we may, may still have to do administration, even as a PMO manager, but we're not going to take our time to cover that off the course. What we do recognise, though, is that we will potentially do delivery support. Now, this is kind of the, you know, a step beyond admin where we have to understand project programme management in order to provide the appropriate level of support. And a support goes from, actually, tell me what you want to do and I'll do it, right up to being coach and manager uh, sorry coach and, and mentoring of what can be some very senior people in the organization so we may have to coach and mentor the ops director in how to be a good sponsor and so in terms of benefits management we may have to coach and mentor some of the senior operational managers in terms of knowledge management so people on the projects have enough information to be able to deliver their projects so we recognize even as a manager role we will still have to do some delivery support so we don't necessarily go into all of the kind of the specialist ones but we do talk and the the bit that kind of sits there really as we've already mentioned that covers everybody is around the reporting so we spend you know kind of our role as a manager in making sure we've got effective reporting across the organization um, and we'd be mad to think as a PMO manager course we don't spend any time on PMO management so this is where we start thinking about well actually part of our role is to make sure that we have the right PMO, it's set up correctly, um, we do some kind of um, operational running of that PMO, and we may need to transform and close the PMO. And we can have all of those conversations about how many PMOs shut and why. Um, but I think the interesting bit that really comes out in this PMO, PMO element is about metrics about what are the real metrics that we need to have that we set up that demonstrate a we've got the right to more set up for our organization but it's actually doing a good job and it's delivering value to the organization and and how do we get away from just doing metrics that say we're really busy 
um, which obviously is kind of the, the, the kind of much more kind of straightforward metrics to set up. So it does cover that kind of full life cycle of the PMO, recognising, as we've said, the various different kind of contexts, but also kind of the key metrics that are going to be um, involved. And then um, what we do in some detail is go through what we, um, in the competence framework, call the enabling um, competencies. Now, these essentially are things that don't contribute to individual projects or programs, but are there to contribute to all of the projects and programs. So it's really about creating, a, and there was a phrase a good friend of ours always used, about creating the ecosystem whereby projects and programs can actually deliver well. So that covers assurance um, and the governance elements, but also capability and capacity um, development and management, the delivery methods, and the tools. So again, not necessarily looking at individual projects and programs where the delivery support might be, but those wider enabling competencies. So anybody got any kind of specific questions about any of those um, areas? And I'm loving Catherine's kind of comment about the stationary mm -hmm. cupboard. Um, absolutely, I couldn't agree more, especially when you've got the, you can do the ordering and decide on what's in the stationary cupboard. <laughs> Obsessed Absolutely. <laughs> Any questions in terms of the, the the certification and what's actually involved? Well, I'm hoping that's clear rather than just confused you so you don't know how to answer the question. Um, so I think there is only uh, one other thing to know is probably a little few details about the exam. Now, it's, it's always interesting uh, when you're talking about very senior managers doing an exam because it, you know, it's kind of, um, but, it, but it does need to be done in order to demonstrate that you've actually kind of soaked up the kind of the knowledge that you've got through there. So it's a 75 minute exam. Um, it's done online. Um, so you can do that if you're like me and like to do things late at night. You can do it anytime you fancy 24 seven. Um, as I said, you can do it anywhere um, in the world, but it is only in English at the minute. And in those 75 minutes, you've got 60 questions to answer. And it's called complex multiple choice. Most of you will just see the multiple choice element in that. And that ranges from a relatively straightforward question about um, which particular knowledge is relevant to the project manager um, to a more complex question where they will give you a small situation and they say, what would you do in this scenario? So there's not a single scenario at the front for you, for those of you who've done other um, Axelos products exams. So it's not a big scenario where they kind of completely link back. They'll just give you a couple of sentences of a scenario and say, this is the situation. What would you do um, in this situation? And there is a 15, um, ob ob OTE stands for Objective Test Examination. So that's the that's the, the posh words for multiple choice. And there's a 50% pass more, which is the same as for the other um, certifications. And if anybody's interested uh, in becoming a trainer is linked to an ATO, then you need to get 66% to pass some, because unsurprisingly, we expect you to know it in a little bit more detail. And it is a closed book exam. So you, um, so you have to do it all from what's in your head. You have to do thinking as opposed <laughs> to it's not a comprehension exam. Yeah. So um, the recommendation is that it's a, a three day long um, course. Um, you do get a choice to sit the exam when you want. And we would always recommend that you do it within two weeks of the course being completed. We do have people say, well, I'll do a bit of revision and then I'll put myself in for the exam. And um, those people uh, very rarely find time to do the revision and therefore uh, don't get around to doing their exam. So we always say book the exam and then funny enough, you might find time to do some of that um, revision. So in terms of where we are from the House of PMO, um, it's now with APMG and um, over the next couple of weeks, they'll be briefing um, training providers um, and you hopefully will start seeing that coming out in the marketplace from June. So, um, it, you know, it, there'll be several uh, training providers who will hopefully have this um, offered um, in a range of different countries. So wherever, you know, whoever you use as your uh, current training provider, uh, 
feel free to get in touch with them towards the end of June. And um, if you're if you don't know any training providers at all, uh, we'll be creating a page on the House of Payment website yeah, where we'll page. list those training yeah, providers. There's already a page on there. If you want to go and have a look at the House of Payment and look under qualifications, you'll see which um, organisations are already delivering some of the I think it's the administration and the admin. Um, sorry, the administration and the analyst one. So um, yeah, as the PMO manager ones come online, uh, we'll be updating that. So you can always go through the website and have a look. Um, we do often get asked about um, pricing for this kind of thing. The way that it works is that uh, the House of PMO has created the you know, the standard, the the syllabus, the you know the, the things that are actually in the course. And um, APMG's um, job is that they manage all the um, ATOs, so they're the ones that um, APMG are assessing them to make sure that they're good enough. Um, but um, but also um, it's up to the ATOs themselves on how they set their own individual pricing for training courses, which you can probably understand. Um, but the course, you know, being around three days should give you an idea about, you know, if you're going to have a look at what other kind of three day courses might be out there, give you some clue. Um, one thing it is transparent about all of it um, is that the examination carries a, a cost of which that is fixed by APMG. Um, but what you're not able to do is to take that exam without doing the, the training course. And I think a lot of you might have realized that that's been a change over the last couple of years uh, with some of the other popular ones like Axlos, uh, is that you're not really able to do the exam um, you know, at, at that kind of price. I think you can certainly pay Yes, they'll least. charge you more. They'll yeah. charge you. A, they'll charge you a large administration yeah. fee if you're going to do exam only. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but again, that's not down to us as the House of Payment. Yeah. We've set uh, agreed the price with APMG for the exam. Each uh, training organisation will set their own price for the course. Yeah, yeah. so that's how it works. So, so we're, we're looking forward to seeing them starting to come through. Really, towards yeah. the uh, we should you should see them on the books towards the end of June. Yeah. So. Um... So that's it. That's the that's the new one. Um, like I say it's going to be um, out on the marketplace. I.e., you'll be able to book it if you want to uh, from June. Um, we're going to be at the PMO conference uh, in a few weeks. Um, so if you want to come and talk to us more um, about any of the stuff that we're doing around the house of PMO. Um, you can also join us tomorrow if you like to at lunchtime. Birthday. Again, it's our birthday. Um, and we just, just want to do like a, a kind of year uh, wrap up of everything Did that's been bubbly? going. Um, not got bubbly yet. It's got to be put on ice. We'll get that sorted and cake. Um, <laughs> but we just want to um, share with you, you know, what's been happening over the year, what's coming up and, um, you know, how to get more involved um, with us. Um, but uh, for today, um that's today's session i don't think we've got any more questions um but uh, please do feel free to get in touch if you have got any more questions um, we're more than happy to help you um so that's it excellent yeah. good to see you all have a good day yeah. and uh, we'll see you hopefully a few of you tomorrow bye bye